In this video, I want to discuss the properties of exponents. But real quick, before we go over the seven properties, I want to make sure that you understand uh, what a term is. If I have an expression 4x squared, this is a term because it's a whole group that combines multiplication. If you had 4x squared plus 6x to the fifth power, these are each separate terms. So a term involves one whole group that's combined using multiplication. Now, in each term you have a coefficient, that is the number in front. You will have the base, that is what is going to be taken to the exponent. So you have the coefficient is the 4 in this case. My base here is x, and my exponent is 2. And all of those together create one whole term. So with that in mind, let's go over the basic properties of exponents. So the first property says if a, which is our base, is a real number and m and n, which are our exponents, are rational numbers, then a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. What that means is that we add the powers. Now let's take a look at an example. Let's simplify x to the 7th times x to the 9th. Now, because the bases are the same, that's the first thing you need to check. And each of these bases have a power. We can have rewrite this with one base, and then we add the powers. So 7 plus 9 would be 16. And that is our final simplification of this term. So let's take a look at 4z to the 6th times 5z to the 3rd. Now this is all one whole term because they're all combined using multiplication. So we have z, z is our base, and the 4 and the 5 are constants. So what you can do, because the 4 and the 5 do not have a power on them, it's really like you're saying 4 times 5. So 4 times 5 would be 20. And then the second one is z to the 6, z to the 3rd. Now because z is the base and the power is 6 and the power is 3, we can add those powers. Our final answer will be 20z to the 9th. All right, that is property one, so now let's take a look at the second property of exponents. The second property says if a is a real number and m and n are rational numbers, then a to the m to the nth power is equal to a to the m times n. So if you have a whole group here, let's look at x to the fourth, to the fifth power. In order to figure out what this whole term is equal to simplified, we simply multiply the powers, so that would be x to the twentieth. The next property is very similar to the property two. It says if a and b are any two real numbers and m is a rational number, then a times b to the m power is equal to a to the m times b to the n, which means you distribute the power. So let's combine the two rules here on one specific problem. All right, so this problem says 3 times x to the 6 times x to the 2nd all to the 3rd power. So according to property 3, we need to distribute that 3 to each group of this problem. So we would have 3 to the 3rd, x to the 6 to the 3rd, and 
y squared to the third. Okay, because this is like three to the first, this part right here, it's three to the first to the third, and it's a constant, we just take three to the third power directly. So three to the third power would be 27. The next part of the problem is the x group. So I have x to the sixth to the third power. And according to property two, we multiply those. So that would be x to the 18th. And then the y group here, we have y squared to the third power. So we'll multiply two times three. So that would be y to the sixth. And that is that whole term simplified. Property four says if A is any non-zero real number and M is a positive rational number, then A to the negative M equals one over A to the M. So if you have a negative exponent, you can change that exponent to a positive exponent if you flip the fraction. So for example, if, if I have x to the negative 6 power, I can rewrite that without a negative exponent by writing it down in the denominator. So the x goes into the denominator. A negative exponent changes where the variable is or where the base is in terms of numerator and denominator, it does not change whether the number is a negative or positive number, or whether the term is a negative or positive term. So let's say we have three x to the negative two. That negative two power is only on the x. So we keep our three in our numerator, and that negative two on the x makes that x go into the denominator. Now if you have something in the denominator, so let's say I had 4 over x to the negative 7, and I wanted to simplify that, it works the same way. You just change from being in the denominator to the numerator. And so this would be simplified. When you are dealing with exponents, you never want a negative exponent if you are trying to put it in the most simplified form. All right, property five and property six are pretty similar, but let's go over five first. If A and B are any two real numbers with B not equal to zero and M is a rational number, then if you have A over B to the M power, then you can distribute that M to a and b, whether it's multiplied like we saw before or if it's being divided, the inside is being divided. So this just ends up being a to the m over b to the m. Now keep in mind that your b cannot be zero because you cannot have zero in the denominator. So if I have something like 3x over 5 to the third power, I'm just going to distribute this 3 to every part of my term. So I have 3 to the third is 27, x to the third is x cubed, and 5 to the third is 125. And that is our final answer because 27 and 125 do not have any common factors. Property six says that if A is any non-zero real number and M and N are any two rational numbers, then if you have A to the M over A to the N, that is equal to A to the M minus N. So when we multiplied the two different numbers that have the same base, we added the powers. So if we are dividing the two numbers, we will subtract the powers. If we have, for example, x to the sixth 
over x to the fourth, and we want to simplify that. We simply take the bigger number, the bigger numbers on top, and we subtract the smaller number from it. So six minus four would be x squared. Let's take a look at a problem using this formula where we have the bigger number on the bottom. So when that happens, you want to subtract the bigger minus the smaller. So since the bigger is on the bottom, our answer will stay on the bottom and we will subtract the four that is on the top from the 11 that is on the bottom. So that would just be one over a to the seventh. So when you're doing this rule, it is important to know the bigger number versus the smaller number and where to bring the power. Do you want to bring it up because we're bigger on the top or do we want to bring it down because we're bigger on the bottom? The good news is that property seven is actually the easiest property out of all of them. It says first, if you have a to the first power, that will automatically be itself, so it will be a. So if you see an a without a power, that does mean a to the first. And then the last one is if you have a to the zero, that is always one. A lot of times people wonder, why is a to the zero equal to one? If we look at this, if we have something like um, six to the seventh power over six to the seventh power, well, we know by reducing those that that is equal to one. But if we have six to the seventh minus seven using the rule we saw in rule or property in six, then that would be six to the zero. So you see how those relate together. So whenever you see anything to the zero power, know that it is one.